word of truth. And that is so true. Because that means there is no motive, an individual motive, in whatever it is that you receive from God. You receive it in its purity. And because there's no motive within their heart, you are able to also pass on the word with purity. So that is awesome. Uh, if you're there, if you're with us today, I'd like you to just appreciate him once again and say thank you um, on the comments. I think I'm going to be engaging today. So whatever question I'm asking, just type it on the comments. Okay. So we're going to look at rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. Rightly dividing. Very strong words. Not just to divide something, but to... Right, so we put more emphasis on the, 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 the dividing of the word of God. How we uh, assimilate it. how we lay hold of the truth and how we hold on to the truth and how we fight with the truth before anybody. And that's the only way we will that we're being faced with in the body of Christ, even in the body. Like the scripture says, some, there's some who have crept in into the body in order to lead other astray. Other. So when we're able to rightly divide the word, it's easy for us to know the fake. It's easy for us to know the false prophet. It's easy for us. And this is amazing when you look at the scripture. And then what are the new covenants? You know, these people, they didn't have the Bible like we do now. So they would have to go to the synagogue, you know, on a specific day. And then the, the Bible will be read out to them. You know, so every every weekend there about they go to the synagogue, the Bible will be read, and that's how they uh, get to hear the word of God. But they are so in tune with the word that when you look at the scriptures, you realize that anybody, whether you're a prophet, whether you're a Pharisee or Sadducee, or whoever you are, a scribe, if you say anything that is contrary to the word of God, they'll stone you. That's what they did, and they'll stone it. They'll take stone and literally stone the person. And that's what they thought they were doing to Stephen. That this is blasphemy, what you're saying. And they stone him to death, you know. And that's what they do. They stone you to death because you're speaking something that is contrary to what the, word, uh, uh, what the Lord laid down in accordance to his word. So they didn't take it lightly. So sometimes they stone the wrong people to death like they did with Stephen, you know, but that's their take on it. They believe this man was talking gibberish, rubbish, and um, he deserved to die. So they stoned him to death. So when we look at the scripture, let me use the same scripture that uh, we've all um, been using, uh, which is the same Second Timothy, and that's in chapter 2, verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And I'm going to read from three different Bible translations, three different ones. So one will be NKJV, New King James Version. I'll read from King James. I tend to like King James on this matter. Then I'll read from Berean Study Bible, which is the BSB. So the New King James says uh, in Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, be diligent. So I want us to be zeroing on, on, on keywords because those words are very important. Number one, it says be diligent to present yourself. Number two is presenting. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we look at King James Version, KJV, KJV says, study to show thyself approved unto God. 
study to show yourself approved unto God. New King James says, be diligent. King James says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show yourself approved unto God. And Berean Study Bible, BSB, says, um, make every effort to present yourself approved to God. Make every effort to present yourself approved unto God. An unashamed workman, an unashamed workman who accurately handles the word of truth. So he says, I'll read again, make every effort to present yourself approved to God. And a, an unashamed workman who accurately handles the word of truth. Who accurately handles the word of truth. So that means people can incorrectly and inaccurately divide or handle the word of truth. So we can see Apostle Paul warning us here that we should show or we should study or make every effort, be diligent, be steadfast to make every effort to present yourself approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that means you can incorrectly you can inaccurately divide or handle the word of truth. You can incorrectly. And we saw that with him, if you look at the book of Acts, you know, there was a man that named Apollo. The Bible said it was mighty in scripture, but yet but he didn't understand the new birth. Though it was mighty in scripture, but he didn't understand the new birth. And I think Priscilla and Aquila had to pull him to one side to now explain to him, give him in-depth understanding about the new birth. So to now balance his, his theology, his theology was based on the baptism of John the Baptist. So he, was, he had to be called, you know, by Aquila and Priscilla, you know, these people were schooled and they understood clearly. They were able to rightly divide the word of truth to Apollo, because he was a very strong, diligent teacher, but yet his wisdom, his understanding was still based and predicated on the old covenant mindset. So he was educated and brought up to standard with the new doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, the new gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can see in this letter in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, that I've just read to you, that this letter was written to young, to young minister Timothy by Apostle Paul, advising his protege about the need to work hard, to be diligent, and to work hard concerning the gospel. So he's telling him, he's telling his protege the young minister Timothy, Apostle Paul was writing to him, advising him that he must be diligent, make every effort to study and make every effort to show himself approved unto God. And I want you to kindly note that the approver is unto God, really. You are showing yourself approved by God and not from man. The approver is not from man, but from God. So it's God who is going to authenticate his word to let us know that, yes, this is my word that you're teaching. And it was uh, earlier on in, the, in, in my brother's teaching, he said, John the Baptist preached what God asked him to preach. So he did not deviate or move from the word that God asked him to preach. And that was the gospel laying the carpet for the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming the gospel of Christ by preaching the kingdom of heaven has finally come to man, has arrived for his at hand. So we see that. So 
Apostle Paul was warning his protege, telling him, Timothy, be diligent. Let God approve your study. Stay in the word. Let the Holy Spirit teach you the word. And the Holy Spirit will approve his word upon your life. And how does God approve that? By stretching forth his hand. He approved his word or testified his word by stretching forth his hand to bring his word to pass by healing and all other signs that he does. So the approval of Timothy's diligence, hard work, and all effort will come from God. In him, rightly dividing and accurately handling the word of truth. The approval comes from God and not from man. And that's very important that I want us to take with us today. So, because, and the reason being, there are many de deceivers out there who want to subvert, who want to sabotage the spreading of the word of God. This was the problem that Apostle Paul was faced with in his era until today we're being faced with the same thing. So he knew this, he was passing this message on to young Timothy, the young minister Timothy, in order to be diligent. So this same problem that Apostle Paul had in those days, we're still having them today, whereby people want to sabotage, they want to subvert the spreading of the word of God. So the young Timothy's role, and my role, your role, his role was to defend accurately the word of God. His role was to defend the word of God. And that's what Apostle Paul was trying to pass on to him. And the reason being, we'll find that in the book of Matthew, when we read Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, if you read verse 5 and verse 11, you can see the reason why Apostle Paul was trying to nail this into the mind of his protege, Timothy. So he says, and I quote, I read from verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed. Take heed. The word take heed means pay attention, give consideration that no one deceives you. Take heed, give consideration, pay attention that no one deceives you. So what is he saying here? What, this is the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ speaking in Matthew chapter 24. And look at what he's saying to us. He's saying the responsibility not to be deceived is, is in your hand and is in, the, is in my hands. Jesus said, take heed, pay attention, give consideration. The word heed means to pay attention, to give consideration that no one deceives you, no one deceives us. For me and you not to be deceived, the Lord Jesus Christ was telling us here that it is our duty and not his duty. Take heed that no one deceives you. So that means we can be deceived if not the Lord Jesus Christ will not tell us that. So he's now warning us, be diligent. Show yourself approved by God. Be diligent, study. Make all efforts and study. So Jesus is saying to us here in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, it says, and Jesus said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. So God is not responsible if, if we are being deceived. It is our way. And that's what Apostle Paul was passing on to young Timothy. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is passing on to us and to every of his children, that we should take heed not to be deceived. So that means there are deceivers out there. So to deceive means when we zero in on that word deceive, we have looked at the word he. Attention. So I have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. You have to give consideration that you are not deceived. And then the word deception or that means is an evil motive. The person who is this has an evil motive within them. 
to intentionally mislead others. That is the most evil thing. That means the person is evil. The person is a devil. He says to deceive. And when you look at the word deceive, it is only used with Satan. The word deception is always used with Satan. He is the deceiver. So he's telling all that, take it. So Satan has his children who, was, who are working for him, obviously. So they want to deceive the elect, the children of God, and cause them to go astray and come out of the will of God. So, so the Lord Jesus Christ said, take heed, pay attention, give consideration that no one deceived you, that no one by trickery or no one by evil motive that they are already carrying within them trying to fulfill the mandate of their father, Satan, they will intentionally, that word is quite important, to intentionally mislead somebody. You know the truth that what you're saying to this person is the truth, but the person, a deceiver, already has a motive within them. This is very important. They have a motive within their heart. And the motive within, between, within their heart is to intentionally deceive and to mislead a person, to beguile a person or another person. So verse 5 says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Wow. Why would a person be easy, easily deceived? Because they have not taken time to study and to show them, themselves approved by God. A worker who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Those are the ones Satan will play serious game with and will lead away. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling us here that many will be deceived. Many believers will be deceived. When they'll come and say, I'm Jesus. Oh, yeah, really, you are Jesus. And then they will carry them off. In the old covenant, the Lord said, if a prophet comes to you and tells you something otherwise that is against the will of God for you to do, though that prophet may have, may have been giving you prophecy that have been coming through, but if you do that thing, he said you have sinned. So you should know your word that anybody that comes, whether it be a prophet, if that word does not align with the word of God, you take heed. That you're not deceived by that person to so say for many will come in my name as saying i am the christ and i will and will deceive many i'll jump to verse 11. verse 11 says there are many false prophets who are false prophets these are satan's boys they carry the nature of satan they have the power of satan and these are the ones who are doing the job of Satan, deceiving. These are the ones you call the deceiver. He says, there are many false prophets. That is the job of a false prophet, to deceive people. He says, they will rise up and deceive many. These people will actually carry out the task of deceiving people. Christians. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will, will grow cold. So if they succeed in their deception, what they will create in the heart of the believer is that the love for God in the heart of that believer will wax cold. And you can see that in the body of Christ today. When Satan will lie that, oh, I thought, you know, God is with you. How come this one has not happened? How come that hasn't happened? How come you haven't received your breakthrough in your area? And how come you haven't married? How come this has not happened? How come you, have, you, keep, you keep saying that eventually the love of God in the heart of the person will wax cold. Because the purpose of Satan and what the enemy does very well when he wants to capture somebody is to discredit the credibility of God. That's what he does. That's how he deceives people. He wants to discredit and destroy the credibility and the character of God. When you look at everything Satan does, is to destroy the character of God. 
Because when he says to you or, or to I that, oh, God is not with you, how come nothing has, he's the one attacking you, say, well, how come your prayer has not been answered then? You've been praying for this matter for this long, nothing has happened. And then you start saying, oh, that's true. And that's it. You know, so deception has come in because he wants to intentionally mislead the person, whether a man or a woman. And then before you know it, the love of God in your heart, in the heart of the person will begin to wax cold. And he says in verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who endures to the end, that means we have to hold on. We have to trust God. We have to study. We have to be diligent according to the scripture to study and to know this God that we're serving. And the Bible says, those who know their God, they shall carry out exploits. It's only those who know him. It's not for everybody. That's why the deceiver will be able to deceive many and to lead them astray. So I read verse 11 again to verse 14. That is Matthew chapter 24. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And it says in verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and the end will come. So what will bring the end is that everybody must hear this gospel. Everybody's ears must hear this gospel and everybody must be given the opportunity to say yes or no to it. He says, then the end will come. But he says the gospel will be preached. What is the gospel? We will look at it later. What is the gospel? So Apostle Paul, in this second Timothy chapter 2, if you go to verse 1, we can see what he's trying to say to Timothy. The bone of contention that was he was faced with them, and he was trying to warn Timothy to prepare him also. So when you read 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we go to verse 1 now, I'll read verse 1 and 2. So it says, you, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So you can see the strategy of Apostle Paul pouring himself into this young Timothy, this young minister called Timothy. And he calls him son. Be strong in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, and it says in verse 2, and the things you have heard from me, which is the gospel, among many witnesses, he said, commit this to faithful men who will not be able to teach others. So to get the information, then they didn't have a Bible, so there was no Bible to read. So all the information was passed to Timothy, and Timothy uh, was being advised now by Apostle Paul to now also pass this information to faithful men who can also now teach others and pass the info. A teacher is somebody who passes information, who gives information. So pass it on to all faithful men that they will be able to pass the information or teach others about it so we can see the strategy of apostle paul to spread the gospel of jesus christ not just to spread it but also to preserve it to spread it and also to preserve it so this is what apostle paul was trying to accomplish so you can see how they guard this gospel so it says in order to for us to accomplish that you have to commit it into the hands of faithful men who will be able to teach others all you have to do now is go to the social media uh, um, stage and you will hear so many errors being propagated by uncouth ministers, strange, unusual, uncivil things being taught. So you can imagine why the Apostle Paul was trying to inform 
and trying to tell his protege to prepare for this in order to defend the gospel so that what he's preaching is the gospel not another man's gospel so you see when you look at the social media uh, platform there's so many things being said there so there was such a massive attack against the church of christ about resurrection there was such a massive massive attack about it about the resurrection that there was a great need to remain steadfast and diligent in defend, defending the gospel. So this is what Second Timothy chapter 2, this is what Apostle Paul was trying to convey to Timothy. And you can see, it's almost as if that is a, is a plan by the great apostle because obviously his exit was probably imminent. His exit was, you know, very close. So he was trying to pass on this information to pass the baton to young Timothy to now continue in this quest, in this race, in this, in this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to stand for it. But before you can stand for the gospel, you must know what the gospel is. So there was a massive attack against the, against the gospel of Christ Jesus. There was a great attack against it. So this man had to be diligent to defend it. So we, we can also zero in to this truth and to this fact when you also go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and you read verse 14 and I'll jump to verse 16 to 18. So verse 14, then verse 16 to 18. So verse 14 says, remind the believers of these things. Apostle Paul talking to Timothy now that you should remind the believers of this, charging them before God to avoid quarreling over words which succeed only in leading the listeners to ruin. is warning them, reminding, reminding believers of these things, Apostle Paul said to Timothy, charging them before God to avoid quarreling over words which succeed in the listeners to ruin. So I jump to verse 16 now. Verse 16 says, but avoid irre irreverent, empty chatter. And verse 17, and the talk of such men will spread like gang gangrene. Among them are Hymenius and Philip, who are heard and they undermine the faith of some. They say that the resurrection has already occurred and they undermine the faith of some. So these are two guys called Hymenius and Philetus who are now trying to spread something different that Christ didn't rise. That yes, he rose, but the resurrection has passed and there's nobody else. And nobody else is going to be resurrected. And Christ promised to resurrect all of us back to life but they are preaching something different, heresy, something that's not true. And Timothy had to defend this. So you cannot overcome in prayer, especially without the word. You cannot see answers in prayer without proper understanding of what you are seeking God for in prayer. And this is very, very, very true. You cannot see answers to what you are seeking God for to what you are trusting God for without an in-depth understanding of the word to take to him. Your heart can only connect through faith. The heart is only connected to the word through faith. So whatever you hear, faith can come from almost 23 sources. So it says faith that comes through hearing of the word. Whatever you hear that goes through your ears, it triggers a, 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 an a action in your heart. And that action will propel you to now move and act on those words. And that's how faith operates, because faith is a verb. So a belief system will be, will, be, will be caused in your heart, and that belief system will cause you to now move and now act on those words that you've received. 
So you see, faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your heart will only gravitate towards what you believe because of what you've heard. The scripture says in Romans, how can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear unless somebody is sent to them? So it's what you hear and you connect your heart to that will bring the reality of what you are praying about or seeking about. So the word can only bear fruit within your heart as you allow it to go into your ears. And it, there's a chain reaction that is birth when the word hits your heart. So your heart can only connect through, the, through faith in the word of God. And that word that you have received through diligent study. And if you look at it, Hosea chapter 4 is a famous scripture that we all know. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is amazing to me. Because this, God says my people. He's not saying the world. His people, that means the body, the church, are being destroyed. And the reason behind destruction, he said ignorance. Lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge is destroying the people of God. And where do we get knowledge from? From study of his word. From being diligent to study his word. My people are destroyed. Why? It says for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. Skipro says, I have also rejected you. Because you have rejected knowledge. I have also rejected you. So if you go to Isaiah 53, also verse 11, Isaiah 53, verse 11, he says, He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall be justified or shall justify many. By knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear the iniquity. So we are justified before God by knowledge. So the scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, accurately handling the word of truth. Isaiah 53, that I just finished reading, verse 11, he said, By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. By knowledge. So it, it is really our advantage to be a student of the word in the Holy Spirit. It is to our advantage to be a student of the word. Why? So that we're able, number one, to persecute we're able to prosecute our case adequate, adequately and appropriately before God. God the judge. It is those who have been empowered by the word are able to prosecute. That means you're going before the judge and able to stand before the judge and bring your case before the judge and adequately and appropriately prosecuting your case, case before God, even before Satan. It is the word that you know that you will use to expose the lies of Satan. It is the word that you know. So if, if Satan is attacking and we do not know the truth about that matter, then we suffer in, 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 in ignorance. If Satan is attacking and we do not know the truth about that matter, then we suffer in that ignorance. It could be sickness, it could be demonic afflictions, it could be poverty, it could be lack, not understanding God's forgiveness, and Satan is planting evil thoughts and reminding you of your past or something that you did. All those things, if we are not aware of what God has accomplished, through the knowledge we have gained, by our study and diligently studying of the scripture by the help of the Holy Spirit, Satan will afflict us as believers and we will sit under that affliction thinking it came from God. 
and Satan is a liar. So that is his modus operandi. He operates, he wants to see if you're ignorant. That's why the scripture says, my people are destroyed. God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, ignorance. So what is he saying? If you do not know what you have and your inheritance, and Satan comes and afflicts the person, the person will die out of ignorance. A lot of believers are dying out of ignorance, not knowing that which is there. So, and if you are ignorant about something, you cannot fight well, you cannot fight accurately. You, you tend to give up. You tend to give up and accept things. But when you know that, no, this guy is stealing from me, you will be angry. That's why, is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, it says that, you know, from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent, the violent take it by what? Force. They take it by force. The violent take it by force. Those are the ones who know their inheritance. So when Satan comes, you stand and you're ready to, you're ready to, de to destroy him, say to him, I know my right, you know. And those who don't know their right, he takes them out. He robs them. So the thief comes not except to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's what he's doing to you today. He wants to steal from you. He wants to destroy. He wants to kill. So Satan dealt with people due to ignorance. He afflicts people due to ignorance. Oh, yes, I've been through this already. And that's why I understand what I'm teaching clearly. Oh, yes, I was in gross ignorance. And Satan whooped my ass very well. <laughs> Sorry for the language it would mean very well yes ignorance ignorance is a terrible thing i never want to be in such ignorance is a terrible thing until i sought knowledge and the truth in the word of god you know begin to see light then light came then life came then grace came then truth came then i was able to equip myself to fight and resist with raw truth that has been established within the heart, able to stand against the lies of, of Satan. I say, Satan, say, you're a liar. You're able to face him and stand by the word of God until that desire of God is fulfilled in one's life. After you have done all to stand, stand therefore. So it's a resolute, it's a place you have been because of the truth. It's because of the truth you can stand. That scripture says, after, after you have stand, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, stand therefore. Anybody that can stand and remain standing, you know something. Oh, yes, you are equipped with something that's making you to say, Satan, you will back down and not me. You are equipped with the truth. You are equipped with the truth. And as such, you are standing because of that truth. And as such, you are able to resist the enemy until the desire of God is fulfilled in that your life, in that situation or circumstances. So that's why the scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. That's what it is, the fight of faith. This is what the word of God says concerning this, and that settles it. That settles it. So Satan will come in our ignorance to afflict us. He, affl he has afflicted me. I mean, he afflicted me in sickness. He afflicted, you know, financially afflicted me in all these areas. But the truth of the word, the truth of the word, that was the combat. That was the battle. This is what the word of God says, you're a liar. And this is what I stand by. So when the Lord said to, when Moses said to the people in the wilderness, whoever is on the Lord's side, come and stand by me. You know, the Levi and the family stood by him. So who are we? We are meant to stand by the truth. It says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, shall make you free. But if we're not studying like Apostle Paul said to his protege Timothy, study yourself, make all effort to study, be diligent. As a worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when Satan comes, because there's nothing you can do with him coming, but when he comes, are you ready for battle? How do you get ready for battle? Truth. The helmet of salvation, the righteous, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the belt of truth, everything you
must be all those things must be on you you must be that's the knowledge that you must carry all those things being listed the helmet of salvation salvation is the knowledge and the truth the belt of truth is a knowledge of truth of the word of god and our, and our inheritance in him the gospel of peace is known that through the death of christ god has established So irrespective of what is going on between you and your father, you have peace with him. So that peace helps you. That's a battle. That, that's, that's a battle weapon itself, peace. You say that you can't use that against me. But God has cleansed my sin because of his blood that was shed for me. But if you are not equipped with that knowledge, you will begin to shrivel. Satan will begin to whip the person and then to attack him because when you're too strong when you have been filled with the knowledge of god satan satan can never stand before such believer he can never stand before such believer that is equipped with truth the breastplate of righteousness i am the righteousness of god through christ jesus there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ and i am in christ so i'm not condemned by god that's the truth the minute you are equipped with that truth in your heart, Satan can never whip you. You'll be wasting his time. So these are the truth that we must study to be approved by God. A worker, a workman, who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So are you equipped with truth? In which area is Satan lying to you, people of God? In which area have you not received knowledge have you not received counsel through the Holy Spirit and through the word of God that Satan is now using to afflict? The liar. In which area of our lives? In which area have we given up and said, well, maybe God doesn't want me to have this? That means we don't have knowledge in that area. When, they say, when Satan was whipping my bone very well, I remember then, after I was praying to God earnestly, I remember clearly, I've never joked with that statement the day God told me that years and years ago. He said, my son, anywhere that you are suffering is because you lack knowledge. Seek knowledge. I have never forgotten that statement when the Holy Spirit told me. And as I seeking knowledge, as I praying God, God, now God, my problem was that God guide me to the wrong knowledge, to the right knowledge, not to the wrong one, because there are many knowledge out there that are not true. You know, so in any area that you are being oppressed is because you lack truth, knowledge of the word of God in that area. And what we use to beat Satan is the word of God. That's his koboko, like we call it in Nigeria. That's his belt. When you take the word of God, you whip him with the word of God. I've experienced this. I remember there was the time in a vision, a person came to me disguised in you know, as a, as a human person, but my discernment was so accused. I'm thinking, who is this person? What are you doing here? Next minute, I started speaking as scripture. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in you. That's what I was quoting. Every time I quoted that scripture, this person would scream. It was like the thing was paining them. I was inflicting pain, just uttering those words. Screaming of screaming of pain, of agony. So I thought, oh, okay, this is this is this is hurting you. I started saying it more. They would scream more than it, it was so bad. The person covered their ears with their hands so tight. I rushed the person down on the floor. I pulled with all my strength, trying to pull the hands away from the ears so I can speak into them very well to, to even do more hurt and damage. But the person was screaming in agony, just me quoting the scripture and releasing the scripture at this person. So that's why we used to whip Satan whipping his bomb then he runs away but he will stand a bit for a while thinking maybe this person will give up maybe this person will give up and realize that this person is not giving up he's not he's, he's, he's resolute he's not turning back from this truth he flees from that person that person is marked in the realm of the spirit i tell you there's some people mark them that they will say well you better make sure when you go and meet this lady or this guy you are ready for war because this lady will not back down this guy will not back down until the result is accomplished and that is the only way and the way we can accomplish this is what this scripture is saying to us 
study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly, rightly, rightly dividing, accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to God. I was only able to resist Satan. That's why I don't joke with my Bible. I read it every day. Over 20 years every day. I don't joke because I understand what I'm sharing with you now. Every day, study my Bible because I know until I started doing that, yeah, Satan dealt with me very well. He would just be throwing things at you. Sickness will come. This one will come. Poverty. They will squeeze your finance out, squeeze your business. That's how squeezing your children, start throwing stuff into the family. You're fighting your wife, your wife is fighting. You just say, okay, all right, sit there. But when you get the truth and you get tired of that, you say, you start equipping yourself with the truth. When the truth comes into your hand, you begin to whip him with the truth, with the word of God. He himself will pack his bag and say, ah, this woman has grown up. Let's take off. Let's go to the next neighbor. I think maybe that one is not smart enough to understand scriptures. So until then, Satan was doing havoc in my own life personally. So I can only share my personal experience with him. But when I equipped myself with the word, when light came, when life came, when life came through the word, now Satan couldn't resist. I'm not a formidable person that if you want to come, he knows that he should be ready because I'm not stopping nothing. I don't care. I'm ready to go for 20 years. Or I'm standing until I see my result. So Satan cannot but to back down when he is faced with truth. That is Cain. If you want to know Satan's Cain, I'm sharing with you today, the Cain for Satan is the word. Satan cannot but back down when he is faced with truth. He crumbles under the light of truth. When I mean truth, I'm not just saying or oh, you're just speaking something today. No, you have sat. You see this scripture saying, study to show yourself approved. You have sat and sat under the Holy Spirit. You have done, I mean, for me now, I, I even go to, into doing, maybe I'm reading just a chapter. Before, when I started reading the word, you know, I read a lot of, I, I take a book, which is what I do. I just take a book and read it. I don't just take one chapter in this um, book and go to another book and read another chapter, no the truth will not be full because you're just getting fractions. That's why some people say they use the word of God to pray, but they didn't get a result. Why would they get a result? Because you're taking fractions here and there. But you sit down and study the old book so you understand the mind of the writer. You know, from chapter one to the last chapter, you study it as you're reading, so you get the full picture, the whole full meal. You eat it and you feel, well, okay, this is why he said this. This is why he said this. So when you're quoting that scripture, you're quoting it from the realm of understanding, not just fractions that's been taken from Jeremiah and take another fraction here. No, you are quoting it from understanding because you read the whole book. You know, I read the book. When I, if I started this book, Corinthians, I'm reading the whole Corinthians chapter 1, Corinthians chapter 2, to, to all the chapters, read the whole book so I understand the full reason he said this. Because if you pick fractions. You will take that fraction, you will explain it away, and then when you don't get results, yeah, God, what's going on? I was quoting you, I've been quoting Deuteronomy to 1818, but you didn't do anything on this matter. But if you read the old chapter of Deuteronomy or the old book of Deuteronomy, you will know why he put Deuteronomy 1818 there. So when you're using it as a battle weapon, you, are, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. So you take the old book, read it to get the full course meal, you know, to be nourished with the truth that God was trying to convey to those people. So that truth now becomes your truth. So when you take that truth and begin to whip Satan's bone with it, he will definitely pack his bag and say, well, we'll come to the wrong place. Show, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. That's the only way shame will be removed out of our lives. The only thing we suffer, when we suffer, the only reason we suffer is scripture telling us, God said, you're not sick, you're just ignorant. You're not poor, you're just ignorant. You're not, you know, lacking problem, whether at home problem, or he said there's ignorant problem. Children are not just behaving funny or not behaving well, he said it's ignorance. So that's what God is telling us. My people are destroyed for lack of. So that means ignorance means 
there, there are words that you have not, truth, that you have not picked up from the word of God to fight and to battle for this issue. And that's the word we need to look for. So he was telling us to study, to study and extract the truth of, of, of God's word by the help of the Holy Spirit. And by, by that truth is what you use to face the enemy. Eventually, he will crumble. And before we can accurately handle the word of truth, we must first of all answer this question. And it's a very important question. And the question is, in fact, there are two questions that, that, are, tied to, that are tied up together here. Question number one, that every person must be able to answer. Everyone, if you say you're a believer, you must be able to answer this question by study of the word, by what the Holy Spirit has shown to you. Who is Jesus Christ to you? That's the first question. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Who is Jesus Christ to me? I must be able to answer that question personally as I spend time in the world. So you read from Genesis to Revelation, the minute you are trying to answer this question, you will now realize, wow, when you read from Genesis all the way to Revelation, all you will see is Jesus Christ. In the old covenant, Jesus Christ concealed. You'll be amazed when the Holy Spirit is unveiling it to you that, wow, this is the Lord Jesus Christ this scripture was talking about. In the new covenant, you will see him being unveiled to the church. So we see Jesus Christ being unveiled to the church in the word of God. So who is Jesus Christ to you? Every believer must be able to answer this question. Who is Jesus Christ to me? And the second question is, what has he, that means what, what has Christ Jesus accomplished for you? This is the gospel. The meaning we can answer these two questions accurately through the word, not by second uh, man's opinion or somebody else's opinion. You have reached this opinion by sitting down to study to show yourself approved unto God, to know that who is Jesus Christ to me and what has he accomplished for me. But the minute you can answer this too, it will be very hard for anybody to lead us astray. Even when they bring another gospel, you're able to confront them with the truth. You're not, you, are, you can now weaponize that truth. That truth becomes a weapon in our hands. So until the above question is answered, who is Jesus Christ to you? And what has Christ Jesus accomplished for you? Until we to answer personally, we, we will not be effective at communicating to people about Jesus Christ. People will easily come to bamboos us with, with falls, with life, this way or the way and teach another Jesus Christ, teach another gospel that is not based on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ until we're able to answer who is Jesus Christ to me, who is Jesus Christ to you, and what, are the, what has he accomplished for you, what has he accomplished for me. If we that question effectively, then we're able to communicate that to ourselves and to our world. And a person, with, a person who wants to sell us lies, we fail. No, he's the son of God. The world knows the son of God. But who is this? The son of God who was born to die for the sins of all mankind in order to restore us all to God Almighty. So we can see the mission of Christ. And Jesus was focused on his mission. So we can see that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross is also a proof or the proof, not even a proof, the proof, that means that's the only proof of my worth, of your worth in the eyes of God. See, when you look at the cross, you see what you and I, our worth before, before God, in the eyes of God, God is saying, that's how much you are worth to me. To put this man in agony and suffering, to be so battered that the Bible says, his, his figure was so disfigured that he didn't look human anymore. The, he, he was so beaten that his face, everything was disfigured. The scriptures say he didn't look human. So you look at the cross, unless this truth is in the heart of people, the children of God will be thrown back and forth that God, this is what I'm walked before your eyes. 
that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross is God proving to me and telling me and telling you what we worth, our worth before him. So it's selling the death of the Jesus Christ on the cross is telling you and I that we, are, we work more than perishable gold. We work more than perishable gold. Glory be to God. Um, so I think I was talking about the, okay, I went, I got to the death and the burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior Jesus Christ is also the evidence of Jesus and God's Father's endless love for us all. You see, these are the truths of the cross. These are the truth of the gospel, you know, and the minutes were equipped with this truth. It will be very hard for Satan to bring any lies. You know, Satan will bring lies to say, oh, you committed this, you did this, you did that, and you start throwing that into one's heart, and will keep reminding you of this. But if you, are, if you are equipped with this truth that I'm sharing now, and you've established that in your heart, by study of the word, you realize that when it comes, you're able to defend yourself. You're able to say, no, I'm pointing to the truth. You know, just pointing to the cross. That Satan, you seem to have missed something. You know, look at the cross. You can see what the Lord did for me and how my sins have been covered and forgiven. So it's easy with that truth to continue, even though when you err or you make mistakes, to stand and continue and continue working with God. A righteous man falls down seven times and they rise up. I remember a lady coming from UK um, and she was um, obviously, she may have um, maybe, I think she had a child out of wedlock or something. So she called obviously on her, that was on her heart. She was a believer, you know. And I remember I said to her, I said, well, when she, when she was trying to explain to me, I said, listen, can I ask you a question? I said, I hope you're still not on the ground. I hope you're up on your feet and continue your work with the Lord. Because a righteous man will fall seven times, but will rise up again and continue to work. Continue your work with God, make your peace with God, and continue your work with Him, irrespective of any mistake you have made. But if you are not equipped with this kind of truth, that alone can hinder one's work with the Lord forever. But Satan will keep reminding you, and you realize that you are not free in his presence. You realize that you are losing so many things because Satan is using that as a whip and as a weapon to whip somebody. But when you understand the full gospel, which is the cross, the gospel is based on the cross, the death, the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is the evidence of Jesus and God the Father's endless love for us all. That he laid the iniquity of us all upon Christ Jesus. And by his stripes, we have now received healing. If you don't know this truth, a lot of believers will be sick and they will just nurture that sickness. They will go to the doctors to get help. But the truth is, the stripes that was laid on Jesus Christ, he said by that stripes you were healed, not even by the death on the cross. So let's say the Lord Jesus Christ, in the end, he refused to die for us. And he said, that, Father God, these people are even wicked and evil. I don't think I want to die for them anymore. After they finish whipping him, that whipping alone is enough evidence for you to be healed. Because the Bible says, by his stripes, by the blows that was dealt upon his body, we are healed. So alone he can claim healing. <laughs> we say, Lord, by the stripes I'm healed, even though he didn't die, but at least this is your weeping has brought healing to my body. You can use that to whip Satan and to get your healing and to tell him not to ever come back to your body or your life ever again. By his stripes, you were healed. That is the truth. By the truth, you are set free or, or made free. So unless we understand the gospel, which is what Apostle Paul was trying to defend and he was passing the message on to his protege Timothy to also study so that these men, these false prophets, these false teachers that have crept in will not use falsehood to draw even young Timothy out of the truth that, that Apostle Paul spent all his lifetime to defend. And we also need to defend it. So who are we defending the truth? 
against is against Satan. You are defending your, that truth against Satan because it's the one that is coming with lies. So when it comes to you to try to bring lies, you have to defend yourself with the truth that you have. And how do you get the truth? By study of the word. If you don't have the truth, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 will not become a reality. My people are destroyed for lack of truth, lack of knowledge. So the truth is to defend us against all the attack, all the assault of Satan that will bring and his cohorts, his minions, is to defend us of all the attack. So this is indeed a great awakening that God will never abandon his own. This is the blessing of the gospel, the cross, because God has promised never to leave us, nor to forsake us. So that our boldness and love will be for him and him alone. And this and his love can be expressed through into our own world that we live in. This is a mystery, people of God. This is a mystery. You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know is what sets you free. Please remember this. You shall know the truth. To know something means you have done serious study and search about the matter. I mean, after studying the Bible for years and years, now, you know, I can just stay there and I'm doing word study, studying each word or particular word to get more deep, deeper revelation about the, 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 the text. That's where I am now. So for me, it might take me one month to read a chapter. Or one week because I'm studying and studying now, not like before I can read a book in one week or, or so, but now I'm doing in-depth study, going into meaning, in-depth meaning. Holy Spirit, what do you mean about this word? To get deeper truth. So that when Satan comes, because God we have promised that he's gonna come. I have a knot of belt and kuboko waiting for him to whip him with, you know. Not him whipping me anymore. That will never happen again as long as the Lord lives. That will never happen again. So God has promised never to leave us, not to forsake us. So we can boldly declare. And like I said to you earlier when I read Matthew chapter 24, and I want to read it again, that the, the Lord Jesus Christ said, we should take heed, be attentive, pay attention, that you are not deceived. Sammy Satan will come to deceive because he said he has, he's deceiving, he will deceive many. So he will come to deceive, but he says it is your prerogative and mine to study and to take heed, to pay attention so that this deceiver, this one with the motive to mislead us, will not be able to accomplish that. How so we can stand by the truth. So this is the mystery of God that the restoration of mankind should be through his precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the salvation package that can only be received through Jesus Christ and no, no one else. Another good deception that Satan has really done now, I'm sure so many of you must have heard this, you know, thinking, um, you know, there are other things that you can do in order to get the blessing of God, another thing you can do to, 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 to get to God. But Jesus made it clear here, because this is God's design, that Jesus Christ is the only access to the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is the only, only with capital letter, access to God. No other way, and that's the truth. That's another truth that Jesus Christ is the only access to God and into the kingdom of God and no other way. I mean, I've never read in any other text because I'm a teacher in the body. I tend to read and read wide to see what is in the mind of people. Even on my phone, I have a, I have a Quran on my phone. I want to see what is in the mind of these people. What are they thinking? So everybody thinks, you know, there are different ways to accomplish these things in God, and it's completely not. Jesus is so bold in the world. I've never seen any text that's as bold as that. A man can stand and say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and nobody can get through the Father except through me. Men, 
That's the boldest, sorry for the English, that's the boldest statement I've ever heard. That is bold. And there's no other text that you ever read on this earth that the, the head of that religion ever said such statement that they are the way, the truth, and the life to God, and nobody can get to God except through them. There's no other. That's the boldest, sorry for my English again, that's the boldest statement I've ever heard. That is there are two things. Is that this person is drunk and mad or is saying the truth? That's the only two options. That this person must have drunk some serious wine. After I finished drunk, he said, yeah, I am the truth. I am the way and I'm the light. Nobody can get through the fact. Or this person needs to be heard and listened to because what he's saying is such a strong statement that no man can ever utter. No man is ever allowed to utter such statement that nobody can get to the Father except through him. And he's the way to the Father, is the truth, and is the life. That, that is, it's only from Christ you can get eternal life. And through Christ. That is another truth. So this is what we mean by being studied to show you thyself approved of God. God is the one who's going to approve you, not Satan. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. Shame will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Satan cannot come with his lies. Let me do, we don't have enough. We are not equipped with enough uh, truth, enough koboko to whip him. So when he comes, we lack knowledge, and as such, we fall and are unable to defend ourselves. So Jesus Christ is the only access to the kingdom of God. No, every other means is a fallacy. And until this is properly articulated, we will be ineffective in our evaluation and presentation of Jesus Christ. And that's the truth. Until we pop properly articulate this truth into our heart, into our mind, this truth become one of us. This truth become our, the truth of scripture must become your default mode. That is where I am now. The truth of the scripture is my default mode. If something says, somebody say they're sick, I don't listen to what you're saying, you're sick. The truth of the scripture is my default mode. And that's what I stand by. So I stand by that default mode. And that's the word that will come out of my mouth to, to speak accurately about that matter. Somebody who can divide the scripture accurately, who can handle it accurately. So we speak the truth, not align ourselves with the fact. The fact is a person can be sick. That's the fact, because fact is subject to change. That's the difference between fact and truth. Truth is unchangeable. Truth is constant. When you go there tomorrow, it will be the same thing. When you go there 100 years' time, it will be the same thing. A thousand years' time, truth will always remain the truth. But fact is subject to change. Because somebody is sick is fact. Because that sickness is subject to change. But truth is, Jesus Christ, by his stripes, you were healed, you are healed. So that means if any sickness comes to you, it is illegal. It has landed on you trying to check you, maybe you have truth or not. So are you going to whip you with the truth or are you going to embrace it? So that's now depend on the person, how equipped they are with the truth of God. That's why it is a battle, it is war. We're in battlefront. A believer that doesn't know that, oh my God, that person will be whipped very well by Satan. It is a fight. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent, the violent, those who are violent, take it. How do they take it? Not by gentle gentility, by force. So my question to us today is, who is Jesus Christ to you? What, are, what has he accomplished for you? It is from this understanding we engage the powers of darkness. It is from also this understanding we evangelize. It is from this understanding that we're able to stand and after standing, remain standing. So I quote again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study thyself, study to show rather thyself, approved unto God, approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly 
divide him. When he said divide him, Brother Tozi talked about earlier. That means, you know, when you go to the, when you go when you go to the uh, um, like Sister Romina and people who are who are women who cook and everything. When you're cutting meat, there are places on how you cut the meat, the incision where you put the incision where you put the cut. You know, you don't cut the bone directly. You look at the ligament and you cut from that area. You are rightly dividing that food and cutting at the right place. If you cut at the wrong place, you put so much stress upon yourself. But when you cut at the right place, you realize that it's easy to slice through it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This is the place of maturity. The default mode. Default mode. That's the thing that erupts within your spirit. You are so much. The word has so much been buried into you that when situation comes or Satan comes with his rubbish, what comes out of you is scriptures. You just begin to whip him with scriptures. After a while, we'll pack his bag and run away. Uh, this is not the right place. We we'll say, let me try, try this woman, but um, I think she knows too much. So you whip him with scriptures. So show, study to show thyself, approve unto God, a worker that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I hope we have been blessed by this teaching. If you have been blessed, kindly type it on the comment box. I want to say, may God bless you all. May you begin, may the Spirit of God begin to come upon you. May he begin to teach you his word. This is how I learned the word. I remember one day I was reading the scripture and I got to, I, I was reading the book of uh, first, first John. And I go to 4 John chapter 2, verse 20 and tw verse 27. And it says, you do not need that anyone should teach you. He said, but the anointing, he pointed me to a person within me. He would teach you all things. And he would not lie. He said, as he has taught you, abide in him. That was the Holy Spirit. God was telling me, you sit under the Holy Spirit and I will teach you. And why did God say that to me? I remember I said, at times when you're being taught by men, men tends to add the, the part of themselves to, 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 the, to the word of God, to the teaching that they're teaching you. And the part of themselves could be the teaching, the purity of the word of God has been diluted because flesh has been introduced into that word. And men, if men is not careful, you realize that by the time you convey the truth, that you've picked from the word, you have mixed it with a bit of flesh. And that word is not no longer pure because you are mixed it with self. You know, and Brad Tosti uh, uh, also said this earlier, you have mixed it with self, that that word has been mixed with self. So the word is no longer pure because some part of you have entered that word by the time you pass it on to the next person. You did not deliver that word in its purity, you know. So it is very important to make sure that the heart is so empty, just like he said in his teaching, that unless you die, you realize that you're mixing other things with the word. That word that you receive from God in his purity has not been polluted by what you've introduced into it, the, the bit of flesh that you added to it, that you added to the word. So the Holy Spirit said, you sit and I'll teach you. And he said, if you notice, it's that all the apostles were able to walk in the power and the dimension of God's grace and glory because they were taught by Jesus themselves. Even Apostle Paul was taught by the Lord Jesus, by met Jesus, and Jesus taught him. And the Holy Spirit now, Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, He will teach you all things and He will guide into all truth. So the next phase of people will be taught by the Spirit Himself. As we're being taught by other people, People who are genuinely have the heart of God, who are dead to themselves and are able to release the purity of the word of God from their heart to us. As we are being taught from those people, we begin to eat the proper truth from the word of God. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We have to face God in prayer, check his heart. Lord, if this I'm trying to teach, if there's something in it that is that flesh has added to it, Lord, please remove it. Just let it be pure so that the people will receive this in its purity. So I pray in the name of Jesus that the presence of the Holy Spirit begin to rest upon you. 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the presence of God will begin to lure you to Him. I pray in the name of Jesus that the word of God becomes so sweet, like food that you eat, that you will not one day be able not to sleep unless you read that word and spend time with Him in your word. I pray that God will reveal Himself to you and Jesus will open your eyes to see Him and to recognize Him when you read the word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Jesus will open your mind in order to comprehend his word. That when you're reading it, you'll be getting in-depth truth, raw truth, undiluted truth that will be from God's mouth into your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray in Jesus' name that everyone with one issue or the other, from today as we begin to, as God begin to draw you into his presence to read the word, the truth of God, we become a shield, a battle axe in your hand to whip every evil and every satanic gathering, every satanic plot around your life. That victory will be so cheap in your life. I pray this and I bless everybody in this house as you listen now. May God be with you. May God grant you peace and may God begin to reveal his truth to you. And may you begin to walk in God's victory that Jesus Christ obtained for us through the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you all. And it is done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You can type amen on the comment box. God bless you all.